we promised it, so we have to do it. We have to talk a little bit about Virginia on the other side. Okay. Um, and I don't know. I mean, you hinted at some of your feelings about it. This is not going to be an in-depth um, breakdown, but I just sort of maybe rather than focusing on like a whole breakdown of what happened in that election, um, I just want to know two things, right? One, I'm sorry. McAuliffe sucks. He sucked for years. They were both cloud group guys. Both yeah, I mean, just rich assholes. McAuliffe is one of those, you know, random guys and people who aren't familiar with Virginia. I mean, I'd rather have somebody on from Virginia, the activist scene, to talk more in depth about this. I'm just telling you my opinions of him because I lived in D.C. for a while when he was governor of Virginia. Um, you know, he is he represents a very specific kind of political class that I couldn't imagine dealing with if I was like a native Virginian, um, which is this kind of group of people who come and, you know, make money and get power in Washington, D.C. Um, but because they don't want to live in Washington, D.C. proper, they start to, you know, they live in Alexandria, you know, across the Potomac. Right. And then they start sort of trying to dictate the way that the rest of the state is coming. Anyways, this guy with no charisma, he also is not a left winger by any stretch of the imagination, centrist. And as Matt was mentioning earlier. Earlier, is deeply um, in bed with the same kind of financial um, interests as Yunkin, right? Um, but I did want to know because it was a big, it was a big loss, right? Um, I just wanted to share this map here, which I think people should take seriously. Um, you know what this does mean going forward. Um, here we go. This is the vote share from the New York Times. Uh, this is the move. <laughs> counties across Virginia and the the right wing shift in the state. As you see there, um, this blue arrow that's a hypothetical because nowhere went more democratic um, in the state. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm looking at Richmond. Nope. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe there's a blue a little blue dot somewhere that I'm not seeing. But as people no. can see, the trends are very clear. And look, even in you know, this is Al Arlington County, Alexandra County, Fairfax. Like this is all the Washington D.C. kind of metro area, right? And it's one direction. Um, right. And. Look, the, the Yunkin campaign is it was a despicable campaign. I mean, they focused on, you know, racial animus, etc. Um, I don't think that we should downplay that aspect of it and the fact that it does show a kind of reactionary bent. Um, but I don't think that we can just be so glib as to sit here and say that that was the only thing, um, you know, that happened. Effectively, the Democratic Party in Virginia ran a campaign on one thing. Donald Trump, orange man, bad, um, which was what they did with Biden. And he, you know, sort of squeaked through in the end um, with that strategy. This is not something that is going to work um, forever. And it certainly is not going to work in, in context of, you know, governor um, races across the country, Senate races across the country, congressional races across the country. The fact that the Democratic playbook is so depleted right now, I think should make people very, very worried. And, um, their kind of attachment to running these centrist candidates who not only are uninspiring in their performance, their character and their vision, um, they're uninspiring because they are just very clear um, political party cronies. I mean, McCullough is not some guy who just sort of came up. He's like, oh, we uh, let's go for this random guy. And this is a Clinton boy, right? This right. Is a Clinton boy who's been playing the game with that party for years and years and years. Right? People know who he is. He's also a governor, right? Um and look, yeah, so the CRT stuff is is certainly um, worrying, and Matt was mentioning it earlier. I mean, we've, we've done entire episodes about the threat of the CRT kind of backlash and the, the reason that it's the right-wing playbook. But as Matt alluded to earlier, you got to be able to beat that shit. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, you got, like, everyone was dunking on that older guy. I mean, we should have had the video. Um, that older guy who is... <laughs> Uh, so the good liars here. clip where yeah they ask him like hey uh what are you concerned about he's like i'm really concerned about C i'm voting because the crt is like what do you know about it? i don't know really anything about it but i know i don't like it i so. know that it, and also it's the most important thing like i mean that guy was uninspiring almost as uninspiring as mcculloch right um and the point there is that if that is like <laughs> what you're inspiring people like they're like i don't really know but i know it's the thing i have to do then you're losing um like you're losing in more ways than one you're losing that election for sure but you're also losing at like any kind of political vision um that will be necessary to push back against i mean because the fact is yeah the crt stuff is lies the right wing lies fox news lie like this is the shit the liberals like to get worried about it's like oh the right wing media lies to people all the time right but yeah well no shit and you can't break through that stuff because it's very weak um yep. and, and the only reason that stuff is effective is because all that you're 
doing, um, I mean, I, I should have had it prepared, but like the Democratic Party was sending out mailers across the state of Virginia. Of so Trump. we're blowing it. Oh Did yeah, that I mean, that, and also the uh, the Trump endorsement um, mailers. Did you see those? They were just no. like they looked like they came from the Republican Party. It was like Donald Trump endorses Yunkin, right? And it had like quotes of Donald Trump being like, "This is a great guy. These are the things that we want to do." Yeah, it's, and it was paid for by the Democratic Party. Right? The Democratic Party is just putting out, you know, pro. This I mean, is whatever, like this is them so up their own ass because they like that's they want to run against Trump. Yunkin knew that they want to run against Trump, so he de-emphasized Trump. So they're like, oh, okay, here we got him now. Let's do this bullshit where we just advertise for him. And mm -hmm. like as if like Republicans don't give a fuck that much. They might like depress turn out a little bit if he's too Trumpy, but they'll fucking go. Like yeah. I mean yeah. And I don't know if you you have a handy Matt. I, I realize I don't have the that Cooper clip you're wanting to have us. If you could put that in the chat, um, but while you're doing that, I want to show another kind of blunder here, um, yeah, yeah. which this is Ryan Grimm in the Intercept, and this one is wild. This is next level stuff. Um, so this is, um, I think it came out earlier this morning um, from Ryan Grimm at the Intercept. Oh God. Internal emails show how a Lincoln Project Tiki Torch stunt went wrong. So for people who are not familiar with this, I'm, I'm sure people are familiar with the imagery here. Um, they had these people sort of, you know, follow um, Youngkin's campaign around, you know, on the, the last few days of, of the election, holding Tiki Torches, you know, the idea is to sort of tie him to that, that movement. Um, but it was, it was a kind of bizarre sideshow. Um, it did not have the effect um, that, that that the Lincoln Project, right, which is just like a I don't know a golden parachute for a bunch of piggish right wingers to continue making money yeah. after they have you know that that part of the, the country uh, that that political movement has full on embraced you know <laughs> um, you know complete reaction rather than veiled reaction. Um, anyways, the story here is that these Democratic um, that the Lincoln Project was sending these people around. Um, the campaign itself had no idea about this, and they were using these pictures, right, um, going into the election, saying, like, look at the people who are supporting him, right? But it was completely false. Um, it, was, it was made up. The people who were the paid actors who were supposed to do this, the expectation was that people in the media were going to come up to them and, and investigate who they were with, uh, which people weren't really doing. So that message didn't get out. And then Democrats and Republicans, uh, sorry, Democratic like operatives um, started um, tweeting out these photographs, being like, look at the people who he's surrounding himself with, which created like, like what's the thing Matt, that like Republicans are fixated on, right? Is that everybody is a paid protester. Everything is an op. Everything is theater. Right. And essentially they gave that to them on a, like going into the elections. Like, look, they're trying to like pretend that we're racist. They're trying to tell lies about us. Right. Yeah. That's the Lincoln project for you right there. That's the disarray of that movement. Um, not only, I mean, just strategically a blunder, um, but also like technically a blunder. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. Like it was a bad idea in the first place, but the, the follow through and the way that they put it out there was a complete disaster. The fact that these people continue to get donations from, from liberals across the country is amazing to me. And frankly, um, it's a danger to the democratic party. It um, is. It really is. I mean, the, the evidence there is that's right before the election, you give them like that narrative, which not only plays into what you're saying, but also like the exact like the trump derangement syndrome narrative which is like the er narrative of, of for reactionaries as well like everything that's going on whether it's like what any any sort of complaint whether it's like climate change or vaccine p it can be dismissed by oh that liberal is uh is overreacting about this stuff right and they're just really like giving them ammunition to do that by the way the uh, cooper clip is in your dms okay um my okay I got twitter it. dms yep let me see. Um, I will but yeah, I mean, this, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's wild um, to, to see that. And like, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to say it again. We don't really do too much like electoral coverage and sort of breaking down why they're nuts. Um, the Democratic Party and like all of their advisors and, and, and campaign um, managers, et cetera. Um, but I'll just tell people, and I know most of our audience is probably aware of this. People like do not care about Trump the way that upper middle class, right. um, super plugged in liberals do. I know it might break some of y'all's heart to hear that. 
people do not care that much about Donald Trump in the way that you think that they do. Most people have moved on with their lives. They're concerned about, you know, series like bread and butter issues and material issues um, surrounding them. The fact that people still think that everybody is sort of suffering um, from, you know, this this continued freak out about Donald Trump, you know, um, nearly a year after it, I mean, a, a year after he's lost the, uh, after he lost the 2020 elections is delusional. And the fact that it seems that these, the one, the pundit class and certainly the kind of consultant class has not learned that lesson, uh, I think is, is very, very um, worrying for their, their, their chances in 2022. Yeah. I mean, it's also such, shows such incredible week because like, I don't think Trump would win in 2024. I think mm -hmm. if, I think he's, I think he might run, but like, I mean, the only reason I say I think is that against Kamala or Pete Buttigieg, um, <laughs> Uh, actually, I don't know, but did you um, see the? T sorry, there was a Harris poll that came out today, and and Har um, uh, Kamala Harris is um, tied with Mike fucking Pompeo. Mike Pompeo, she's tied tied with him. Yeah. I mean, you want to talk about a depressing? Yeah. Anyways, I mean, I don't think it can be her. I almost like. I mean, that's a, that, that, that one of the good things Joe Biden has done is make her responsible for border issues, so basically toxifies her for yeah. the general election. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I mean, so we have this Anderson clip here because yeah. as everybody know, it did not take very long. So again, the Democrats run on this kind of stupid, we're not Trump message, which is only attractive to people who like, <laughs> um, people who work at CNN and at MSNBC, frankly, um, it did not take long for them to turn the narrative into the fact that actually it's not our insane campaign strategy it's not the fact that we're completely out of touch with people it's not the fact that we can't beat simple and stupid crt messaging from the right wing it's the progressives how much of this is a message just the democratic party that it's too far left i, I, I mean that that if you're the squad or if you're you know someone who's been calling for for defund police um or socialism or democratic socialism. I wonder, but I wonder, I wonder if, if, T, if Thierry had been able to stick on a message of economic progress, uh, you know, family uh, uh, leave and minimum wage and that kind of stuff, and uh, maybe we wouldn't be making this argument. In other, in other words, in other words, uh, th there was an economic message uh, from the Democrats that was available and was necessary given the rising costs. But what happened is. Uh, we 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 pulled out of our own federal uh, bill all the family leave stuff. You're, you're undermining the economic message for Terry McAuliffe and leave him with Trump is bad and, and vaccine mandates are good. Uh, I just I, 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 I don't know that it's an up or down he, vote on on, and, progr on on progressive politics. It's and he a, leaned in to the school issue. I was stunned when he handed Youngkin the issue of the campaign. I don't think parents should be involved in the schools. And then literally on the eve of the election. He's running around Virginia with Randy Weingarten, the head of the union that kept the schools closed. It's not just the curriculum issue. The schools were closed. Parents were pissed. They knew they should have been open. And McAuliffe not only handed it to Yunkin on a tee, he then at the end of the campaign flipped everyone off and said, I'm going to even run on it even harder. And it has killed him in these suburbs. That, that is an important point that the McAuliffe guy says, that it isn't just the curriculum issue. It's that the curriculum issue was able to um, join in with this other issue about frustration with getting back to normal, which, by the way, is what Joe Biden ran on, right? Like the the videos of empty or, or, or full stadiums again, and that was good that he did that, um, by the way, right? But the, the McAuliffe just abandoned all of that, and like like I said, like again, the CT stuff's totally bullshit. You got to say something better than yeah, parents can't be involved in their teachers or their their kids' education, right? You might be muted. Muted, David. I think that you're right, and it's 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 a hundred percent true. Um, that too. That I think that people do need to be really careful um, of. I don't know overplaying uh, COVID nineteen pandemic um, policies as like the things that they're, they're running on. Because again, that is also something that is extremely popular with a very specific class of liberals, but a lot of regular people are sort of hoping that we start to get closer to solutions. And the fact is, is that Biden has done a very bad job at managing the pandemic. 
Um, you know, we could talk about all the things that Trump did for sure. Um, but under Biden's administration, we had a very slow rollout of the vaccines. Uh, we've seen another massive wave. Um, I don't know, like, and, and, and lack of, of emergency um, provisions. Like we saw it early on when we were dealing with the pandemic, right? We've seen like almost like laissez fair policy in a lot of ways um, from the Biden administration regarding this, except for the harshest and most unpopular aspects of dealing with the pandemic, right? Which are mandates, et cetera. Um, I don't know. But yeah, it's, it's, it's just, if you're, tr- if, if the democratic party thinks that the way that they're going to, <laughs> to maintain power is sort of running on um, finger uh, wagon, PMC kind of cultural politics um, and not being Trump, whew, man, we are in for a very, very rough next couple of years. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. And a lot of those people can't learn those lessons. A lot no. of these Democrats came up at a time where that sh- is co- fucking alien. It's like X Files <laughs> to them, right? Like, and they're going to lose. And that's yeah. the thing. Like, McAuliffe, like, you don't have to tell me that the, sta- the generic Democrat is probably on bounce and generic Republican. Like the, the people he uh, signed, um, uh, I'm blanking on the term now for uh, prisoners or like expunge their sentences and like that sort of stuff. That matters, right? I'm not going to say that doesn't matter. At the same time, like time comes for everybody. Mm-hmm. And like you can't get super upset about, uh, especially <laughs> Carlisle group governors, I think. Yeah, man. And like, again, like, I would like to have some of our comrades on from Virginia to talk about this. But boy, I mean, I was in that, you know, I lived in D.C. for a while. And man, there is a stink that comes. And this is not saying that Youngkin is not a part of that world either, right? He's just as much a part of it. Um, but I feel like the the kind of inability of, of the Democratic Party in that state to be able to sort of break away from the kind, like, there's parts of of that like kind of washington dc side of 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 virginia right um the the metro area that it's just like it's like deloitte it's like if deloitte were like a colony in like your (laughs) your, you know community right it's very frightening and it's a very specific group of people there um and they're all over the country don't get me wrong um but man you got to move away from trying to hope that you know sort of looking to that to be like the great light of progressivism and and, and progress yeah, I, I, future, you know? <laughs>